Mushoku Tensei is the biggest isekai enemy of this decade, thanks to its well-written characters, peak world-building and insane storytelling. With the airing of season 2 part 2, it just had one of the most liked episodes in quite a long time, which made me think, what is the best episode of Mushoku Tensei? Which one had the most impact? Is it the episode where Rodi and Eris were transported to the Daemon continent and saved by the infamous support? Or the episode where Paul and Rodi were able to talk through their differences and reunite as a family? Well, in my opinion, it's this one. Starting out with happiness and relief, to the absolute shock of not just getting attacked, but dying in mere minutes. Accompanied by its the music, insane performance from the voice actors, and its movie quality animation, made it the best episode of Mushoku Tensei. However, before we look back at it to understand why people love this episode so much, I want you to remember what happened before, the build up to it. Episode 20, The Birth of My Little Sister, starts out with Rudy being locked up in a cell by this little weird of Pax after Rudy tried to save Lilia. He thought that he would be locked up there forever, but Zanoba, the dirt prince who idolized Rudy, wanted to become his apprentice so he can create figurines just like him. After a weirdly well detailed 5 minute talk about the figurine, Rudy explained what happened and said that he can only be his apprentice if he helps him get out of the cell, which Zanoba solved quite quickly. Meanwhile, Roger had rescued the families of the guards and Lilia. Later they met up and it was a really nice and just heartwarming moment where Rudy got to talk with them for the first time after years of separation. They exchanged gifts and Daish apologized for calling him a pervert. This episode everything seemed to be going really well. Rudy got to know people that are really important in the future of the story and he was able to save Lilia and Daisha while also making their relationship closer than ever. From Aisha initially disliking him to completely changing her attitude than wanting to spend time with him. Everything seemed to fall into place perfectly, setting the stage for the next episode, making it much more impactful. Episode 21 Turning Point 2 is an episode which beauty and passion are impossible to ignore, regardless of one's feeling about the anime. Everything about it was perfect from the sudden mood change to the shock value to the emptiness and hopelessness that followed, leaving a profound psychological impact not only on the characters, but also on the viewers themselves. It's an episode that borders on being impossible to recreate, somehow managing to not only perfect what the source material offered, but also surpass it. The episode continues in a similar manner to the last one, where after a brief spar between Roger and Eris, Roger acknowledges Eris as a warrior. We see her overjoyed for the first time, actually happy about something. As a character, she went to a huge development in the past few episodes and this moment felt like the finish line, where she is no longer just a little kid anymore. The next day, they continued their journey, happily discussing defeating red dragons. However, as soon as Rudy began to talk about the strength of the seven great powers, both Roger and Eris abruptly stopped moving, visibly terrified, an emotion Rudy couldn't comprehend as he felt nothing amiss. Suddenly, a man and a girl appeared on the other side. Roger urgently warned them not to move under any circumstances, but their ox, overwhelmed with fear, leaped off the side of the cliff. The man turns around and asks if they are Roger and Eris, but he doesn't recognize Rudy at all, claiming that Paul was only supposed to have two daughters. Orset turns back, seemingly ready to leave, but then Rudy does the stupidest shit ever. What I never understood from this episode is why Rudy kept asking him questions. That ox just jumped off a cliff. The strongest person they know is terrified and begging them to stop moving. And this guy is just like, so how's the weather? After Rudy reveals that he knows the human god, Orsa detects them instantly, leading to one of the most intense fight scenes in anime that lasts for 10 minutes that ends with the death of Rudy. The cool thing about the wall fight scene though isn't just that it looked good, but the technicality behind it and the way they just fought. While the concept of Roger and Eris fighting was straightforward, based solely on their strengths, what really intrigued me was Rudy's approach to combat. Orsted's initial attack ruptured his lung, effectively neutralizing him as a mage since he couldn't cast spells anymore. Of course, Rudy can do it without speaking and thanks to that he was able to keep himself alive by manually feeding himself oxygen. I love how it transitions from Rudy's desperation to survive to his determination to go for the kill, revealing just how terrifying he can be. His usual attack transforms into a sharp drill 
heated to its maximum potential through friction. And let's not forget the fireball, the only attack in this 10 minute fight that catches our set of guard. However, the fight ends quite abruptly with Rudy seemingly dead, talking with human god. I really like this conversation because it was different from the other times they spoke. During the fight, it more the first instance where Rudy truly experienced despair. While here, Rudy has accepted his fate, acknowledging that he lived a short but meaningful life. However, he wasn't actually dead. The girl traveling with Orsted asked to heal him. After waking up on Eris's lap, the episode ended abruptly with a mix of sadness, confusion and despair. What I really love about this episode is that everything happens so unexpectedly. The anime never really had a villain, the strongest character we knew was Ruijard by far and he got absolutely destroyed in 20 seconds. In anime where that isn't really common, it truly catches everyone off guard. The character of Orsted is also intriguing because he doesn't come across as a typical antagonist or someone inherently evil, but rather as an immensely powerful individual who exudes an aura of terror. But the coolest part is though that how many new emotions we can experience coming from the characters in such a short period of time that isn't really characteristic to them, yet you can relate to it, you can feel Ruthie's despair, you can feel the hopelessness coming from Eris. What I really want to point out though is the overall production of the episode because every bit of it was movie quality. The actual animation itself is insanely well detailed, I love that they were going for perfection. In the first half we get these full on action shots, not hiding any bit of movement, to then giving these close cuts that simplify speed and impact. The background art itself and the way characters fit into it is also just really cool. The way they play around with lightning on different instances is just so much effort that is mostly unnoticed. Like normally there is a clear contrast in daylight using these sharp shadows, but here in the storm it's more evenly spread because light coming from multiple places instead of just one main spot. All this combined with really well produced music and voice acting makes it such a great watch. What I really liked after this is that the writer let the enemy just stay sad after this. There weren't really happy moments after that for the rest of the season. Everyone left. Rudeus was left all alone and that greatly emphasized just how much impact this one episode had. Overall, this is my favorite episode from the anime so far. It is a good mix of happiness and sadness with this great shock value. Now if you are curious about how I felt about the first part of season 2, click on this video. Subscribe, like, goodbye.